You really are in trouble. Hampton will be a sponsor by your local Chevy dealers at Chevy Drive How about our quarterback here in the bell? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ring the bell here and let you guys go to your neutral corners, and we'll come back after the news and continue this Can discussion here. Can we get here. food brought in different rooms? <laughs> I don't want to eat it. We way. might have to do that. Keep these guys separated. Coming yeah. up, it's the news in the WGN Radio Newsroom. Here. News from Chicago for Chicago. You guys' jobs are to get clicks, so it's like when you take my quote out of context, when, when you just say that, if you paint the picture on the inside out, like y'all are trying to split, split us up as a team. I'm not blaming anything on the coaches. I'm never going to blame anything on the coaches, never going to blame anything on my teammates. I will take every, whatever happens in the game, I will take all the blame. I don't care. To drop pass, it should have been a pass. Put it on me. But never will you hear anything come out of my mouth to where I will blame it on somebody else. In this organization, my teammates, never will you hear that. So I just want to clear that up and just know that, like, I need to play better. That's it. Point blank. If, if y'all, that's, that's what I should have said in the first place. But. It'll be sponsored by your local Chevy dealers, ChevyDriveChicago.com. Little, little cowardly, backwardy, back, no, back just, walking. And that was I about. Just, I was just gonna yeah. say, we know he can run forward, but he's really going backwards. Yeah. Yeah. You he bet can he back is. Pedal. That was you about four, four and, and a hey, half hours afterwards. Yeah. But all right, but you know what? I hate to say it, but truth hurts, and we're gonna find out how all this shakes out. Again, I go back. It probably would not be the way I would expect. You know your quarterback to, to, to go about it, but he put the cheese on the cracker. This offense is dysfunctional, and he's saying what they're trying to get this offense to do, and him in particular, ain't working, and he's frustrated, and yeah, he said something maybe he'd like to have backed off on. All right, let's get to the uh, Justin Fields Keys to Success, sponsored by your local Chevy dealers. And ChevyDriveChicago.com. Drive what Justin Fields drives. All uh, right, let me take the first shot. All right, go ahead. Keys to success, pray before the game. <laughs> go ahead, Dan. That's in bold face, right? <laughs> All right, it, 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 look, it, and it's essentially kind of a, you know, a, a story all across the NFL. You got to protect your quarterback. And I understand, you know, that he's, you know, the guy taking the arrows and slings and all that, but you can't strip away the facts. The facts are through two games, he's been sacked 10 times. He's been pressured 30 times out of his, what, some 70 passes, half of them. He's either getting sacked or, 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 you know, a shot to the head. All I know is the offensive line is going to be a work in progress today. Think about this. Braxton Jones, who we never even worried about last year, he started, played every down. Well, now he's out of the picture. Larry Borum will take over at left tackle. Now, inside, that's where we still have a lot of issues. You know, Tevin Jenkins, you just mentioned it. You know, it seems to me like Ryan Poles put a lot of eggs in in Jenkins' basket thinking that he would not only play this year but play well. Well, he's been on IR, and he's missed half of the games that he, you know, has been in a Chicago Bear uniform. So can you count on him? No. That's one reason why they signed Nate Davis. Can you count on Nate Davis? No. He's been out. He didn't practice the entire uh, training camp preseason, and then in the first game, he was awful. He got bludgeoned. Last week, he didn't even make the trip. He had a death in the family. So all that being said, Cody Whitehair was going to be the center. Now he's at left guard. You got Lucas Patrick, a backup, playing center and not doing a whole lot. And by the way, we're starting to miss Sam Mustafer, aren't we, OB? <laughs> and then at right guard, at right guard, we're going to find out if the Jaitir Carter or Nate Davis will be, you know, starting today. All that being said, this is kind of a sad underbelly of this. Ryan Poles is, you know, he hasn't been that great. And I'm telling you, one of the things, when he signed Nate Davis, really perplexed me. Ryan Poles came from Kansas City. Kansas City has a backup offensive lineman named Nick Allegretti. Played at Illinois, your alma mater. Nick go. Allegretti is a terrific player, and he's a backup on Kansas City. He was a free agent. We could have signed him. I and, agree with you, and he on that one big time. And he wouldn't miss. He wouldn't miss one play, not one one down of practice. He would be there day after day after day. He would have been a rock. We could have built around, and yet. Ryan Paul's thinking, oh, I'm a genius. I'm going to go get this guy, Nate Davis, from Tennessee. Instead of doing what I think was the obvious 
procedure and signing Nick Allegretti. All that being said, we're going to find out if they can protect Justin today. Again, we don't need to be going into some, you know, you know, 25 plays of, of, uh, of, of seven step drop. That's for sure. The, the, the Chiefs, the Chiefs have a special player in Chris Jones. He's a really good defensive lineman. Other than that, their middle linebacker was their next best player, and he's going to be out today, Bolton. So we've got a chance to be somewhat effective. So we need to protect our quarterback. I personally think those guys are going to lay it out on the line for him today because they know he's going to be facing a lot of music if things don't work out. Well, Dan, uh, you said a lot of things there. And the kid from Illinois, I couldn't agree with you more. You were spot on there. And why something like that didn't take place, I have no idea. But I, I'll take that back. I do have an idea. Anytime uh, 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 somebody like you, a Hall of Famer, or anybody that comes and has an idea of how to improve the Bears, especially if it's an individual from another team, make the trade to get It'll never happen. It will never happen. Let me yeah. ask you. Let me ask you a question too. But it's it's kind of like a chicken and an egg thing because from last game when uh, when Fields released the ball with like within three seconds, those were the completions, the ones that he uh, completed to, to DJ Moore. Four and a half, five seconds were the ones that were busted plays because of what you're talking about, right? With the offensive line, you can't be expected to He's block that line. Second guessing himself, he's seeing ghosts, and you know, quarterback. That's why not everybody can do it. That's and and he may be a bust. He might be a bust. I don't think they have prepared him properly and have had a game plan schematically designed for his somewhat eclectic talents. And again, he's not going to be Joe Burrows. He's not going to be Jason Herbert. He's going to be a guy much like. Lamar Jackson in Baltimore, and they win a heck of a lot of uh, games with him doing what he does best. I, I disagree with you on that last one. No way in the world is he close to the last guy you mentioned. Danny, we can't win football games. It's in front of us. It's three years. We're not winning and whose fault it is it? You, you mentioned whatever. It could be, the answer could be all the above, all the above. But this kid, what he's done for starting out his third year, he, he just fails miserably, Dan, fails miserably. And, and, and my point being, you're going to call a coaching staff out, you're going to call basically your other 52 teammates out, and then you go after the press, you go after the press in this town, that's like committing suicide. Well, all I know is this. We're going to see the defending Super Bowl champions at 325 today. All that being said, they now are coached by a guy everybody thinks is a genius, Andy Reid. Oh, he's a genius. And they've got what you think is the best quarterback that the league has seen in, you know, a long time. Okay? No, I got that. There's... A few great okay. quarterbacks. He's one of them. Yeah, okay. Well, all that being said, he was the MVP in the Super Bowl last year. You know how many yards he threw for, Andy? 187. Yep. Okay? It wasn't like some 350-yard game that OB is expecting Justin Fields. <laughs> he threw for oh, 187 yards. Bring, uh, wait, wait, you, wait. I'm not finished. <laughs> I'm not finished. Here's my point. The Chiefs... How about our quarterback threw for not one yard? That was... One game a long time ago. <laughs> but but here's, the, here's my point. I love you, brother. Stop. Well, here's my point. You have no the, the point. Great, listen. No, I do. The genius coached That's Kansas City uh, Chiefs with the greatest quarterback on earth has scored 21 points and a loss to open the season. They scored 17 <laughs> last week. Now you're going to tell me that that yeah, you're going to tell that, me we, he's we need a lousy to, quarterback. We need to resign Mahomes to another uh, 200 million. You, I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, anybody want Matt Nagy back? I'm just saying. Coaching has a lot uh, to do with the success of a football team. Will you stop a digging a hole, please? No, but let me also say this. You know, the the Bears they, they need they need to be sick of all this. They need to be, I mean, they need, they can't sleep at night. I couldn't. If I had lost 12 in a row, are you kidding me? 
I'd be jumping off a bridge. All I'm saying, if they go out and play violent and hard today and find a way to win, that is the greatest I, elixir. Now, I agree with you 110%, Danny. And nobody, but I'm going to tell you something. The things have happened with Williams, our defensive coordinator. It's taken him like two weeks to clear this up. And, and statements by... But good riddance. But, we don't want it. What is that taking? Four, five, six, seven days to clear that up. You know, management and ownership got to step in somewhere, somehow, and not let this thing fester from one problem to another problem, day after day, week after week. That's not smart management. That's not championship football. And they got a new president with Kevin... Uh, uh, Kevin Warren. Warren. What the hell has he been involved in this? I, I mean, agree. Hey. That's what I'm hey, talking about. You know, you can't we, let things like this fester, Dan. And we thought Ted Phillips was a, a ghost, you know, and never around. Well, where, where's Kevin Warren been in the middle of all that nonsense? You know, it's tough enough to win a football game. You don't, you don't have a ton of them. you got 17 games. And to have management stepping back or stepping aside, uh, ownership coaches, you got players shooting their mouths off, and we can't win a damn football game. Something is screwed up in Hallis Hall. I'm glad he Big shot time. his mouth off. Time now for Raising the Stakes, sponsored by Second City Prime Steak and Seafood. Order today at secondcityprime.com. During the pregame show, we're going to attempt to give away a $100 gift card for Second City Prime. It rolls over if the Bears win, you win. So far, the Bears haven't won. So now at stake here is a $300 gift card. Well, the most important thing is to win it today because we got a great chance of matching up with Denver next week. Yes, indeed. That's when it will roll over again. So let's take caller number seven right now at 312-981-7200. 312-981-7200. If the Bears win, you win 300 bucks at Second City Prime. It is now up for grabs. Hampton OB is sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. A big thanks to Rosebud Restaurants for our delicious lunch we're about to eat here today. Rosebud, a family of restaurants that's woven into the fabric of Chicago, from Rosebud on Taylor Street to Rosebud on Rush, Rosetta Italian to the Rosebud on Randolph, as well as Deerfield, Lamont, Naperville, and Carmine's Rosemont. Every meal is prepared to order with authentic century-old Italian recipes. Rosebud Restaurants are where history, tradition, and mouth flavors all come together to create an extraordinary dining experience. Find your favorites at rosebudrestaurants.com. No one in our entire building, none of our coaches, see Justin as a finger pointer at all. He has always taken ownership of anything that's happened on the field. He takes it head on, he works, he grinds, he puts his head down. He works with his teammates, works with his coaches to find solutions. Now he gets talent around him and has to figure out and balance when to do those cool things athletically, when to lean on others. And that is a sometimes a great place to live in. And that takes time, that takes time on task for him to take that next step. And everyone's on board helping him get into that place for him to be successful. Hamp and OB, sponsored by your local Chevy dealers, ChevyDriveChicago.com. GM Ryan Poles is talking about Justin Fields. Before we get back into that conversation, let's mention that Nettie Regali is our contestant today and raising the stakes, sponsored by Second City Prime Steak and Seafood. A $300 gift card on the line of the Bears win. Nettie will win 300 bucks, and hopefully that will be the case here this afternoon. Woo! That's a that's a lot of beef. That is a lot of beef. Woo! But uh, uh, thoughts about what you just heard there from from the GM about Justin Fields? No, I, he, he was doing a lot of psycho babble talk about finding that place and this and that. Hey, it's about running the proper plays and executing those plays. And you can't call a middle screen with the same formation in the same part of the field three plays in a row. I mean, you think everybody in the league's an idiot? Come on. But all that being said, we got just a few minutes here, OB. Let me just, I was driving in today, and I remember, I remember after we won the Super Bowl, and OB, you can chime in after you guys won the world championship. I mean, the dregs, the dregs of the league, they would show up, and they all thought they were 10 foot tall and bulletproof. I mean, I mean, guys were coming off of IR just to line up against us and, and, and cheap shot Walter and McMahon and every offensive lineman was biting and scratching and leg whipping and chop blocking, doing everything it could to beat the defending world champs. That's the effort we need to see from our group today. Have we, have we seen anything resembling that 
since the last win when they went to New England yes. and they, they, they played like banshees against Bill Belichick? Where has that effort been, that win-at-all-cost effort? If we do that, you never know. But if you go out there and you play the style of football we've seen the last two weeks, they will beat your brains in because that's what they do. They hang around and capitalize on your mistakes. Dan, do you think, now let's say it's uh, late in the second quarter today. Okay, late afternoon. It's late in the second quarter. Or at halftime, or late in the third quarter. If things are going bad for Justin Fields, do you think that they will bring Baygent in? I pretty, think there's that's a chance. Tough question. And, and well, here and again, sounds simple, but it's not. Okay, my point about this whole, you know, brouhaha about Justin Fields. It brought everything out in the open, and it brought it to a, a point where there's going to have to be resolution now. Okay, there's going to be resolution. And if that means that he is truly exposed as a fraud, as you are, have contended, then you as a, as uh, a head no, coach, I, he's you've got to bring Bajan in. Dan, I didn't say he was a fraud. Don't say that. Well, okay, I'm he's sorry. He's not as good as he thinks he is. Well, and for God's sakes, three years of it. Just watch the films. Watch the game. Watch him play. I agree. And he I, doesn't I, thank you. I, I, not, I never said that. Okay, I, I understand. And I'm not – that was the, a, a poor choice of words. You said he can't play dead about 100 times. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> but it takes all, talent to play dead, don't you know? But my point being is if he does play himself onto the bench, then guess what? Eberflus – should be fired if he doesn't give the, the team a chance to win. And if it means bringing in that kid, then by God, do it. This is, well, then, so what you're saying, answering the question, if things start to go bad, I, it, I, I would say they would give him till maybe middle, late, second quarter. If not, they go in half, make adjustments, come out. And if they're still not, we're still not firing on all cylinders, does he bring this kid in? And my answer to that would be, I think, Dan, they would have to. They would have to. I, they would have to. They would have to. All right, guys, that's our pregame show. We're going to be back at 6.30 tonight to talk, hopefully, about a Bears win. But we're not done. First one. I know you're not done. We're going to carry this over to the lunchroom. We're going to have a little lunch. We'll, we'll discuss things over lunch. Well, he's got to talk up. He's going to be in another room. Yeah, that'll be sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDrivesChicago.com. I taught this kid everything he knows. <laughs> Our postgame show. Which lately has been not a lot. <laughs> Coming your way at 6.30. It's a little embarrassing. Enjoy a little baseball right now. <laughs> Good pickup on the blitz. Mahomes gives him time right to Kelsey. Into Bears territory. Down across the 35. A lot going on up there. We're going to check back in. You think? Here's Mahomes on a play fake. Firing over the middle. He's caught by Sky Moore. Inside the 15. Breaking apart zone defenses than Patrick Mahomes. They got to change some of these coverages up throughout the game or else he's going to pick you apart. Looking to do the same here. Has some time. Thinking about running. Still looking. Now just tucks it away inside the five. And Mahomes will be out of bounds there. Stevenson's back in a corner for the Bears. That's good news. Mahomes on the fake little flip. McKinnon gonna walk in. Touchdown, Kansas City. Fields, a lot of time. Can't find anyone. Pressure from Dana. He escapes. There goes Fields. First down and more inside the 40. Third and six. Pressure coming. Fields in trouble. And he is sacked. Chris Jones. We start the second quarter, third and two for Patrick Mahomes. Blitz coming, picked up road. Travis Kelsey, wide open, easy pitch and catch, and a first down for Kansas City. You can't account for the improv of Kelsey and Mahomes. It's what makes them such a challenge. Going to run it here, Pacheco back in, gets a great block. Pacheco motoring inside the 30. And the Chiefs on a big time drive, 10th play of it coming up here. Mahomes over the middle, wide open, Rashi Rice diving towards the end zone, he's in! I think they might end up calling this short. The Back in the game, it's good news for the Bears, number nine. Just going to run it, Edwards Alaire! Close, no signal yet. He's in, touchdown! Over 
we also can't go completely the other direction. High snap, pressure on Fields, gets a little help and a block, turns his shoulder, sidearm, Cole Komet, that was a nice play, and Cole Komet has a first down, working out to the 45. Third down on the play fake, blitz is picked up, Fields still can't find anyone, penalty flies, he's in trouble, throws it out of bounds, looks like a hold on Chicago as well. Because right now when they go zone, there's a lot of space. Mahomes, little pressure, steps away, floats one deep down the far sideline, and is caught. Beauty to Justin Watson. And into a big hit there, but could have been worse. Here's Pacheco, big hole on the right side, has a first down and tripped up inside the 35. Here is Pacheco, right side again, it's working all day, and it's working again as Pacheco is another first down. So they are young back there, second and ten, Mahomes trying to take advantage, going to set up a screen. Pacheco has some blocks, smelling the end zone, and is close to a first down. Now, did the ball came out at the end? Put a lot of eyeballs on him, but... Uh, Pacheco breaks the tackle, and has a first down. Down to the three, first and goal, Chiefs. At some point, they might have to dial up some second-level pressure to try to get to him. Mahomes, wide open McKinnon, he's in again! Blitz coming, just get it out to Herbert, it looks for a block, out to the original. He lost the ball, still loose! Kansas City's got it, Willie Day! Otherwise, it's illegal. Here's Harrison Bucker from 41 yards out. Right down the middle, make it 24 to nothing. Fields is only three of six for 35 yards passing. Stands in and delivers here. Tipped and it's intercepted. It is picked off. Mike Edwards, a former Buck, has it. Bears just looking for anything. Anything positive at this point. Here's Mahomes over the middle. Rice in stride, inside the five, diving for the end zone, and he's down at the one. Draw, Pacheco, walks in, touchdown. Four-man rush, Fields going to go deep again, looking for DJ Moore, and it's out of bounds. Four-man rush, plenty of time, Holmes just going to take off, and tiptoe in bounds, first down, and out of bounds to stop the clock with 27 seconds in the half. 18 seconds in the half now. Mahomes says, you know what, I'm going to go over the middle and go to Watson this time, down near the 40, right around a first time. They're going to mark him a yard straight. Now penalty flies, and now Mahomes is hurt. And the kick is perfect. That was great audio. You heard the little, uh, from Harrison Bucker, who's perfect from the field goal. It's 34 nothing. Four-man rush. Fields gets it out to Herbert. Tackled immediately by Sneed. Third and seven. Blitz coming and it's picked up. Mahomes going deep. Marquez Valdez Scantling makes the grab. Cuts back inside the 25. Play of the drive. Mahomes lofting end zone. There it is. A touchdown to Kelsey. Here's Fields, pressured, lofting for Mooney, incomplete, tremendous coverage. Trent McDuffie all over Mooney and a turnover on downs. Here's Jawan Taylor comes back in to play right tackle. Even, 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 even. Prince Tego Inogo goes from right to left tackle. And it's third and four. Here's Gabbert, some pressure coming, gets it away, and it's intercepted. Jack Sanborn's got it. One man to beat, Sanborn if he can do it. And he is going to be taken down inside the 30. Tego Inogo slowed his progress towards the end zone. But finally a positive for this Bears defense, which has gotten railroaded here today. Getting dinged up by the Chiefs. Here's Fields on a play fake. Design run. Looking for a seam. Fields going to slide down after picking up a first down. Small victories today. Third and goal. Fields rolling out. Looking to make it happen, can't get there. Inside the five, fourth and goal coming up. Fans are booing, they like the shutout, obviously. And Santos ends the shutout. You saw the list of guys that were missing from today's game. It was like the who's who of the Packers, so give them a lot of credit. Gabbert, Sky Moore on target for a first down. It's a Blaine Gabbert.
getting on the board his first completion for the Chiefs knee injury early in the year this this is scary offense coming together now sure is Edwards Alaire cuts back across the grain good strong run and another first down Edwards Alaire has got 12 more yards yeah yeah, right over the middle, knocked around and intercepted. Quindell Johnson, the rookie from Memphis, has his first NFL pick. And he's got, whether it's scheme, whether it's design, something. We, we got to get Fields a little help here in, in the passing game. That'll help with a first down. The guys that they still have out there, are, regardless of the score, would be guys that would be playing in a rotation role in fourth quarters. This is, this is a deep, talented group. Fields going deep. Oh, good catch. DJ Moore, a one-hander. Different first three weeks. You know, one team starting hot and then kind of having a letdown. We'll see how the game plays out, like you said. Fields on a slant. Moore's got it for the touchdown. And DJ Moore got a clip there on that catch. But finally, something positive for Chicago. That should do it. 41-10. Chiefs going to go to 2-1. and one. The Bears... We'll drop to 0-3, and, and Andy Reid passing Tom Landry the fourth most wins of all time. And he told us this week, I love it. I love teaching. And you know what? Keep on going. Pretty incredible. Yeah, I just try not to make excuses. No matter what the situation is, you know, I'm going to go out there on the field and play my hardest. Tampa and OB. You guys have the best post-game football show in America. Sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. you got to protect fields better. you got to be able to tap. you got to protect that kid better. The Hamp and OB show starts now. Hamp and OB, sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Andy Mazur alongside the guys. The losing streak has now reached 13 straight games, and in each of those games, they have given up 25 or more points. 41-10 to 10, the final today, and it wasn't even that close. Uh, the Chiefs over the Bears this it's, afternoon. It's, uh, th- hey, folks, you know, what do you say after that 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 disaster? That, that, that pile of you-know-what. It, it, it's beyond it. Words and and all I can tell you is you know th- th- what you just said thirteen straight losses giving up at least twenty five points or more I mean that isn't just a club record that's almost like NFL record never happened before one hundred three years how bad is it it's really bad and yeah Justin Fields was awful the game plan by Luke Getzey the play calling was awful miserable. Matt Eberflus, how did he get this job? If, if he's the defensive coordinator and his pathetic defense today was based on playing that, that pathetic, soft, punching bag zone and letting Mahomes go up and down the field on us, building a 34 to nothing lead, it, it's inexcusable. But I, I, I'll tell you this overall, OB, this to me, it's a team. It's a miserable football team. It's miserable. They're devoid of leadership. They have no purpose. And it's a like a bunch of untalented grifters all s- circling the pay window on Tuesday. They don't care. At the end of the game, I saw them all hugging each other. Why? Make sure everybody uh, you know gets a, a feel-good hug. It was unbelievably bad. And at, at the end of the day... This exc- uh, exclamation point of a game on a 13-in-a-row loss streak is beyond unacceptable. Now, I've been getting texts from all my pals and all this saying, how can they let Eberflus get back on the plane after he said all week, you know, you talk about a team that confuses activity with accomplishment. They're talking about, oh, we had great practices all week. Oh, yeah, we, we've got a great plan and we're going to execute and we're going to they didn't do anything. Arizona Cardinals with some nobody named Joshua Dobbs goes out and beats the hell out of the Cowboys. The number one team in football. Number one defense. And they beat them to death. Houston, the Texans, they won today at Jacksonville. You got all the, with a rookie quarterback all over the place. You got football teams fighting, scratching, playing the game the way they are supposed to play. We don't see none of it, OB. Well, Danny, uh, you know, there's there's so much to talk about here. Uh, I'm going to try to be as calm as I can, and I don't know how long that's going to last. 
Uh, but I always ha- have a good friend that I talk to every week. His name is George Lamparis. He happens to own the Palace Grill. And he's been texting me the whole game. And he said, if the Bears score, it's fixed. What a pathetic football team. That pretty much sums it up. Let me tell you how pathetic they are, folks. After four quarters, the amount of yards we ran for, and if you break it down in, in yards per quarter of the four, we basically averaged, I believe it was roughly around 28 yards a quarter. In passing, we averaged about 21 yards a quarter. Now, I'm going to tell you what, folks. Our quarterback cannot play in this league. He is not a franchise quarterback. He is not even close to it. He is not a starter. You can't be here three years with game after game in three years and put up pathetic, pathetic numbers and averages in his passing game or whatever. Danny mentioned the coaching staff. What coaching staff, Dan? We don't have one. I th- this game today, and and we're losing forty-one to nothing, and we finally get across the fifty-yard line near, and it's fourth down. And what is this idiot coach of ours? He calls for a field goal. We're losing forty-one to nothing. He just wanted to take that zero off the boards. You absolute, absolute, you are not a head coach. Our quarterback is not a a starting quarterback in this league. And let me tell you something. There's a little bit of brightness coming out here, hopefully this next week. We have the Denver Broncos coming to town, and they lost like 70 to whatever they lost. 20. 70. Points were scored on them today. That's our opponent next week. You bunch, you bench this quarterback, Justin Fields, and you start Taysom Bajent or Tyson Bajent. That's what you do. Bench this kid. Start out tomorrow with a whole new set of thoughts, feelings, and a way to attack offensively. Bench him. He has deserved to be benched. Put Tyson Bajent in there. Let him start at home against the Colorado, uh, not Rockies. Let him start against Colorado. Yeah, the Broncos are opening up as a three point favorite against the Bears at home after losing 70 to 20. You know, that, you, I, you, um, well, let me well, just look. say one more time, Danny, and I'm just telling you, I from day one, from day one, I said when they drafted him, it was a mistake. Get rid of him after the first year. See what you can get. Get rid of them after the second year. See what you can get. And I told him, trade them now. See if there's somebody out there that wants this kid. What in God's name do you think for you? You put this kid up and try to give him to any one of the other 31 teams. He cannot play football in this league. He is not a quarterback. I love to see him at a, a flanker spot, a wide out, or a running back. A quarterback, he is not. My God, how long, how many times does the offense have to pound their heads against the wall. How many times does a coach have to keep starting this kid, starting this kid, starting this kid, and he's dead last in a passing game year after year, stat after stat. My God, when is somebody going to wake up over there? When is somebody in Hallis Hall going to wake up? This kid is not a quarterback in this league. He's killing us. All that being said, we started the game in our basically dropping back in our own end zone with an empty set with a patchwork offensive line where essentially you got a rookie and four guys playing in a new position. To make that call, to first play of the game, to make that call tells you all you need to know. Let's get to the calls, Andy. All right, if you this, want this to. Is, I mean, ridiculous doesn't even get close to calling what that Danny, was. Danny, yeah, let's go. Before you go, here. Four quarters, we have 11 first downs. You know how many first downs our opponent had? Kansas City, 31. And don't forget that they won the toss and deferred and let Pat Yeah, yeah, genius first. gives Mahomes the ball like, okay, here, hot shot, let's see what you got. All right, 3 one 2 7 2 We'll start with the Mark out in Broadview. You're on with Happen OB. Go ahead, Mark. 
Okay, guys, I'm going to start this off slower. It's going to get a little faster, but uh, my God. Why Why wasn't he benched? I mean, it was... Uh, Mark, I've got an answer for you on that, but go ahead, and when you get done, I've got an answer for you why he wasn't benched. I'm like Tina Turner. I'm rolling down the river, OB, and I'm going to meet you. (laughs) And I'm going to tell you, this was, I mean, how, it's set quarter, you call a run, quarterback run? You're down old 14? I said, you you know what my grandpa told me? You learn more with your ears and your eyes than your mouth. That's it. Well, we got him. Hey, we, let Thank me, you, Mark. We, we've got a mouth for a quarterback. He showed it. He showed it all week, blowing his mouth off about the coaching staff, what's been going on, and he and he tried that. He went after the press too. You know what? That, and, and and that's a good call. And I'm going to tell you what for this kid, Justin Fields. You know what? Why? Don't you shut your mouth and let your actions out on that field do your talking for you. Shut that big mouth of yours. And when you get out there, act like you know what you're doing. Try. Try to do something. Let your actions do your talking. Shut your big trap. 312-981-7200 Three one two nine eight one seven two zero zero is our phone number. We're gonna take a quick time out here. Happen will be sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Now back to the Camp and OB Show, sponsored by your local Chevy dealers. And Happen will be and OB certainly is sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Forty one ten final as the Chiefs over the Bears. Well, hey, we we didn't answer your question, uh, our first caller. Hey, the, the reason they did not put. Bayesian in, he's, he's third quarterback. He's a catastrophe quarterback. He can't go in unless your second team quarterback, which would be Peterman, was already in the game and got got hurt. So that's why he wasn't there. Uh, right. But but how smart is a damn coach that has him as the third quarterback or inactive <laughs> because do they not want him to even have a chance to show possibly – he understands how to read defenses and get the ball out on time? I believe exactly what you just said, Mr. Hampton. As funny as some people are thinking about what you just said, oh, come on, they can't be the, the hell they can't. This this coaching staff, I'm going to tell you something. I, it, it is um, These last two head coaches and these staffs we had, I mean, I Dan, I, 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 I struggle to find words how, how to explain these people to these coaches, the people, what are they trying to do? Look again today. This was the third game. You tell me, what was our game plan? What did we try to get moving? How did we try to get moving? How did, what did we do on third down? You know what we did on third down? Nothing. Four of 12. Guess how much Kansas City? They converted 10 on 14. But again, that has been the biggest problem with the Bears for I couldn't tell you how many years. We cannot convert on third down, 4 of 12, okay? Now we have a quarterback. What do you think his job is to do? One of them is, which is so very important when it comes to third down, that's a huge down in this league. you got to convert. Guess what he does? Nothing! 312-981-7200. Back out to our fans. We'll welcome in Lucas from Lake Zurich. You're on with Happen OB. Go ahead, Lucas. Hey, guys, thanks again for having me on, but I got to say something. Since when did we rehire Mark Tressman? I'm sure because this team has got the same state to it, and I'm sure Eberflus congratulated Kansas City after the win, but this staff clearly doesn't get it. And Kevin Warren could go back to the Big Ten if he doesn't do something about it. And Denver's only two-and-a-half-point favorites? Give me the point. Easy money. Thanks. Hey, Lucas, Thanks, Lucas, let me just add on to what you just said, and it's a good call, Lucas. And I'll tell you what. When I sat there, they're losing 41 to nothing. And Eberflus, and he has to be the guy that makes that call, whether you go for it on fourth down or whatever. you, He's the guy. And he settles to kick a field goal for three points. Again, just to take that goose egg off the, off the charts. What a gutless call. And by the way, I wrote down at the bottom of my page, this team has the same taint 
that Tressman had after he gave up back-to-back 40-point losses. It was over. I mean, you know, hey, that's all she wrote. It was over. How long does this have to go on? Well, I'm going to tell you what. He has. There's nothing he can say. There's nothing Getsy. There's nothing any of them. And especially our big mouth quarterback. Okay? That's enough of that kid. I mean, enough. All right, up next, we go to Mike out in Pennsylvania. Mike, you're on with Happen OB. Go ahead. Hey, guys. I've been paying my hard-earned money for the NFL Sunday ticket to watch the Bears over in Pennsylvania. So with 10 minutes left in the third quarter, Fox America's Game of the Week switched the broadcast over to the Cowboys because there's nothing to see with the Bears and nobody wants to watch anything about the Bears because they are done. So in that note, not talking about the Bears because apparently nobody wants to hear about this team, I'm wondering if you watch any college football and have any opinion on Caleb Williams versus Michael Pratt from Tulane for the first overall pick. Because with a Cardinals win today, you sure as heck are looking like the worst team in the league. So who do you like better between those two, and which one do you think the Bears are going to screw up more? Hey, Mike. Hang up and look your answer. Hi, Mike, Mike thanks. Be, be, Dan will answer that, but I, let me throw something at your kid, okay? The next 325 game is the Christmas Eve. And we're on four night games. We're on October 5th against the Commanders, October 29th against the Chargers, November 9th against the Panthers, Panthers, and Monday, November 27th against the Vikings. How many people do you think will be watching the Bears play those teams on prime time television? You know, folks, and again, there, right, there's folks. kind of a rhyme to this, this riddle. Remember, Ryan Pace... Traded up, gave you know, did sold out for Mitchell Trubisky, and then in an effort to try to reclaim a certain level of competence, he traded up and got Justin Fields after ten other teams basically took a pass. And again, we are in quarterback purgatory for what seventy years now. And I just want to tell you, I was listening to a feed of a writer in Kansas City talking about the impact Mahomes has made in that city with the spirit and community, goodwill, and how everybody is proud. of. I mean, think about this. All the Bear fans in Pennsylvania, like you, Mike, all across this country, they're all sick at their guts about this product that Eberflus and Ryan Poles is still running out there on the field. You know what, Danny? What they're talking about, what Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid has done in Kansas City. All right? And you take a look at what the hell's been going on here and, and, and the way they handle business in Kansas City. And I'll tell you what, we have a quarterback who, again, I, I, still, I can't get over how they let this kid off the hook. He went after our, the coaching staff to, for his problems. He went after the press for, him, for his problems. The problem is this kid. My God, if you can't see it, you got to have a problem with eyesight and hearing. Ray Charles sees it. <laughs> More of your calls coming up. We're going to get to the news here in just a moment as well from the Northwestern Medicine Newsroom. Happen OB is sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDrivesChicago.com. You can join our guys, Dan Hampton and Ed Obradovich, and the biggest names in sports and entertainment at the Elite Icons Autograph and Sports Card Show. That's October 6th, 7th, and 8th at the Schaumburg Convention Center. Happen OB will be alongside legends like Brian Erlacher, Lance Briggs, Richard Dent, The Fridge, Mike Singletary, Wilbur Marshall, Otis Wilson, Willie Gall, Leslie Frazier, and Gary Fensick. Plus star of players including Justin Fields, Tremaine Edmonds, DJ Moore, TJ Edwards, Jack Sanborn, and more. Other sports icons will be there as well, like Dave Winfield, Bo Jackson, Tim Raines, Joe Madden, Ben Zobris, Marcus Allen, Warren Moon, LaDainian Tomlinson, Tim Brown, and more. And Charlie Sheen and the cast of the movie Major League will be on hand as well. You know what, just real quickly, Annie, Tyson Bajan, do you think possibly why we, I, we haven't seen him and in and, and like three games or even close to seeing them because of what position they put them in game day. Do you think there's a, a little motive behind that? Could be. Could be. We'll I discuss. Think, I think there is. Yeah, it could be. Now back to the Camp and OB Show, sponsored by your local Chevy dealers. And indeed, Hamp and OB, sponsored by your local Chevy dealers, ChevyDriveChicago.com. Bears lose 41-10 to in a game. 
that I believe unofficially there were more cutaways of Taylor Swift at Arrowhead Stadium than the Bears had first downs in the game. Uh, the Bears had 11 first downs. I think there was about 12 or 15 of Taylor Swift. Well, she's the one that brought it. Yeah. Brought it, I mean. Ugly. Ugly in that respect. It was awful. Awful. Let's get back to the call. Let's do that. This is misery. Right, let's go out to uh, Mike in Maryland. Mike, you're on with Happen OB. Go right ahead. Hey, I love the show. Hey, when uh, Justin was drafted, I said I was excited like everybody else, but the first thing I said was, Ohio State quarterbacks don't have a good track record in the NFL. And I bet Dan knows who the last Ohio State player was that had any kind of career. His name was Mike Tomzak. Yep. Tom, Tom Cat was on our team and played a lot of years uh, up in Pittsburgh. By the way, just real quick, folks, just... Just so you understand that, you know, it, we're all waiting for lightning to strike here. At Ohio State, Justin Fields threw 618 passes and took 56 sacks, one every 12 plays. The kid, C.J. Stroud, who won today for the Houston, Texas, he threw 830 passes, only took half the sacks, 26, one every 32 attempts at throwing the ball. So this has been a track record with Justin Fields. And somehow, some way, we're waiting for you know him to recreate himself. I don't know. Time's running out. Dan, it's never going to happen. This kid is not a quarterback in the National Football League, okay? Probably a nice kid, wonderful kid, whatever, okay? Put him at some other position or get the hell rid of him because I'll tell you what. We're going nowhere with this kid. We're just going nowhere. Just look from the three games here and the 16 games uh, last year. And and just, uh, folks, just look at it. With this kid at quarterback. I mean, come on. Justin Fields, in his career since a starter in college through the NFL, he has thrown over 320 yards one time, one game. In his college and NFL career, Mahomes has now thrown 60 times over 320 yards. Patrick Mahomes, has he ever thrown after four quarters for a net one yard? Our quarterback has against Cleveland. Yep. Yep. He he directed us. They had a total, we had a total of 47 yards, folks. 46 running and one yard passing net against the Cleveland Browns. With him at quarterback. And it's everybody's fault but his. Yeah, by the way, C.J. Stroud, 280 yards through the air today with a couple of touchdowns and no picks. 20 of 30 in that win for uh, the Houston Texans. Back to the phones we go. And Randy and Shorewood, you're up next. You're up with Happen OB. Go ahead, Randy. Well, let me talk to you real quick. So, it is time to clean the house. Coaching, front office as well. $120 million salary cap in the offseason. And we can't win a football game by... We're losing by 25 plus each game at least for the past 13 games. It's getting ridiculous. Yes, Maybe it we is. To draft another high state quarterback, that would be the move, right? Just kidding. That would be horrible. We need to switch it up. I'm looking for work. I'd be better than what we have in there right now. Give me a call, Poles. Give me a call, McCaskey. Um, but thanks for taking my call. It's my first call this year. It's time for a change. But like I said, I don't know if it's me, Howard Stern. We need new people in there. Poll. 100% new player staff everywhere. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Randy. Ryan Randy po- you're right. Ryan Pohl signed two linebackers this year, one for $60 million, one for $30 million. I watched him today get blocked by wide receivers on, on pitches. It's, it's, it's just incomprehensible. All right, let's go back out and uh, welcome in Ken from Cary. Ken, you're on with Happen OB. Go right ahead. Gentlemen, thank you for having us on your show. Really appreciate it. We have a song from Kansas City. Then we think is a Grammy. Justin can't win. All we know is Justin can't win. All we know is Justin can't win. Sing old song. Just get the ball across the city, please. Thank you for the call. Oh, all right, guys. Just don't quit your day jobs, all right? Thanks very, thanks very much for that. 
Uh, that was hysterical. It was very, it was good. Was, it was very good. I yeah, give them credit I'm for that. I'm glad they did it. I that give them credit for that. Good job, guys. Good if job. You, if you didn't recognize the real song, it was Dust in the Wind by Kansas. That was, uh, they were trying to imitate right there. But yeah, it was uh, another rough day for, uh, for John. Everybody's got to take a hard look at what they're doing. The schemes are running, what we're doing, uh, just to help put up, we're, we're char- in charge to put our players in position to execute. And that's what the coach does, and develop the players at the same time. And uh, we just got to do a better job. And then, the, you know, then it's all also on the players because it is a partnership. Both of us together, the execution, the product on the field is always player and coach. Corporate speak there. Happ and OB sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Andy Mazur alongside the guys here at 41-10. to 10, Lost for the Bears today in Kansas City against the Chiefs. And, uh... From all intents and purposes, it wasn't even really that close, to be honest with you. 312-981-7200 is the number. Folks have been hanging on for a while. Let's get out to Newport Beach, California. Welcome in, Robert. Robert, you're up with Happen OB. Go ahead. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, I don't know if you fellas knew, but Fox pulled the national broadcast of the game at halftime. That's indicative of what the Fox executives thought about the product. I don't know if you fellas knew that. So luckily I had YouTube TV, and I was able to switch over and pick it up over there. Uh, but I thought that was quite interesting. They wouldn't even broadcast the game anymore nationally. Why did Why did I you switch you. over? Why did you keep watching it? Because <laughs> I wanted to see the product, Dad. <laughs> I, I'm being I, I'm a, Hey, Robert, yeah, you I'm, like I'm pain, a, huh? I'm, I'm, in, I'm in ex-Chicago and now living in Southern California. And so I've been a diehard Bear fan going back to Ed's days, even in Illinois, Ed. Uh, wow. We're that old. And, and uh, but... I, I called you fellas last year, and, and I feel strongly about this, because I listen to your excellent analysis every weekend after the games. And, and, we, and we critique the players. We critique the coaches. Going back to Nagy before and his regime, we critique the front office. Gentlemen, this isn't going to change until the ownership changes, and the extended McCaskey family isn't sitting home cutting, you know, clipping checks, you know, clipping coupons, and enjoying the financial benefit of ownership of this team. You, you, it reminds me, and that you can remember this, Dan, you weren't living at the time in Chicagoland. Remember when P.K. Wrigley had the Cubs? And remember, Ed, the, how, how horrible they were? Yep. They didn't become better until he finally sold the team. And that's what's not going to happen. For, that has to happen for the Bears going forward as well. Nothing's going to change. You guys are going to have blood pressure going up every weekend until this changes, gents. And that's just fact. Robert, thanks so much for the call. We appreciate it. Hard to argue with. Yeah, definitely hard to argue It really is. And and you know what? I I hate to say it, but after you watch what we saw today, who would decide to put these people in charge? Think about it. I mean, that's what it all boils down to. And and like I said, there's a nobody coaching the Arizona Cardinals. And there was a big concern before the season started that they were going to tank so they could get Caleb, the uh, uh, yeah, Caleb Williams, the quarterback yeah, from USC. Yeah, as the number one pick, they're not tanking. They went out and beat Dallas's butt today. Who put these people in charge? That's the whole point. Yeah, and we talk about money too. You know, we, we went through the, the the deals that were given in this off season. Nate much- Davis, thirty million. Yeah. Uh, T.J. Edwards, uh, thirty million, sixty million for uh, 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 Edmonds. I mean, and, and and they let me tell you this: Darnell Wright, the right tackle, he's a rookie, green as grass rookie. He was embarrassing watching him play today. You know, he's he's big and fleshy, and he's not really got any great extraordinary talent that I can see. But his technique was just god awful. Who's coaching these people? You know what? To answer Robert's question on a couple of basically, who's like who who makes the calls? Okay, let me tell you something. What I know of in this league, okay, the owner of the team, the owner, whoever the general manager is, and then and whatever terminology you want to use for the other people that are in the front office. All right, when a decision like a general manager is made, or and et cetera, that are high supposedly profile people in the organization. I can tell you this, folks. I know for a fact, the last decision, who the last person who gives you the yes you can or the no you can't is the owner of the team. He is presented in a meeting with all the facts of why they want to hire a coach, a general manager, a business manager, you name it. That goes to the owner 
of whatever team it is, and they present it, and he gives the final vote. Second City Prime Steak and Seafood brings us Raising the Stakes. You can order today at secondcityprime.com. We tried to give away 300 bucks worth of gift cards to uh, Second City Steaks today, but uh, the Bears didn't win. So Mahomes cooked them for Yeah, me. fortunately, yeah. Nettie Regali uh, will have to sell for a $50 gift card. It's going to get you a lot of stuff and a lot of great stuff there from the folks at Second City Prime Steak and Seafood. We'll do a, uh, another giveaway on our next pregame show. And the jackpot rolls over. It'll be now worth $400 as we get on for the pregame show before the game against Denver next weekend. That's a nice little game. That's a great little yeah. game, yeah. Yeah, I like it is. This. I like it. Keep, keep rolling over. 312-981-7200 is the number. Tiafino in Elgin. You are up next here with Hampton OB. Go right ahead. How you doing, uh, Mr. Dan Hampton, Ed O'Brenovich? I love the show. I've been listening to you guys for a long time. Thank you. Um, I agree with you guys. I don't understand why this man went for a field goal when the game was out of line. Um, Mr. George Hallis. These last few coaches we've had, they would, Danny, they'd have been gone. A gone in a heartbeat. All right, a couple of minutes before we got a break for the news. We'll welcome in uh, Dave here from Chicago. Dave, you're up with Hampton OB. Go right ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. You know, I, I was curious who the Bears quarterbacks coach is after this debacle today, and I looked him up. His name is Andrew Janoko. Janoko. He is a sec- second year coach at this QB level. His background is that he was the backup quarterback at Pitt, and he also was the field goal holder there. So my question for you is, what kind of a franchise hires somebody with no idea how to play the position, let alone coach it? We have a lot of those guys. Yeah, yeah we do. Dave, we have a lot of those guys what, what, on this coaching staff. What was the qualifications that the guy that resigned, Alan Williams, had? He was a secondary Nothing. coach. In Indianapolis Nothing. for a couple of years. And then now, all of a sudden, they promote him. To a to defensive even, coordinator. I, I mean, these are decisions that are made that manifest itself on the product that we have to watch week after week after week. It's not good enough. Dave, thanks so much for the call. We appreciate it. 312-981-7200. If you're on hold, stay there. I don't want to get to uh, you know a... Please, yeah. please hold on, yeah. folks. Yeah, you know what? Th- that's what Dan and I get ex- we get aggravated about. You know, we, we've seen the good, bad, and the ugly in the years that we played, okay? And i tell you what, we know what it is. And w- what's going on here, it was bad enough with uh, the, the last head coach we had. But this guy, Eberflus, I, I understand he's really a nice guy and every other thing like he that. He is. But my God, he as a head coach, he has done nothing. His position coaches and coordinators, they've done nothing. From training camp to exhibition season to now, and this is two years. Okay, come on already. Yep. Somebody's got to step in here and wake this coaching staff up or get rid of them. As Parcell says, you are what your record says. They've lost 13 in a row, as bad as any team in the NFL history, by giving up over 25 points a game. It's as bad as ever has happened. Danny, we've only had our defensive line, hun, our, our folks and our, our linebackers, Against the opposing quarterbacks, you know how many times we in three games, how many sacks we've had? Zero again today. We've had one sack, and I believe that was in the first game. Zero the second game, zero now. I'm talking about putting pressure on the opposing quarterback. One sack. Oh, and by the way, another one, Demarcus Walker, 95, worthless. I mean, all he does is run into the offensive tackle and stop his feet. It's, it's incomprehensible what I'm watching. 41-10, the final Chiefs over the Bears. We've got another hour left of Hampton OB, so give us a call, 312-981-7200. Hampton OB, sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Chevy dealers, Dan Hampton's defensive player of the game. And it's third and four. Here's Gabbert. Some pressure coming, gets it away, and it's intercepted. Jack Sanborn's got it. One man to beat, Sanborn, if he can do it. And he is going to be taken down inside the 30. Courtesy of Fox, Dan Hampton's Defensive Player of the Game, sponsored by your local Chevy dealers, and the Chevy Silverado, the official truck partner of the Chicago Bears. 41-10, to 10, the final. The Chiefs have defeated the Chicago Bears 13 straight losses, and they've given up 25 or more points in all of them. 
And that continues to add on to this uh, awful NFL record that they hold at this particular point in time. 312-981-7200, the number. We've got a bunch of people waiting for you guys, and let's get uh, right to it. Dan out in Rochelle, you're on with Happen OB. Go right ahead. Hey, guys. It's such an honor to talk with you guys. I think at this point, I mean, like, we can sit here and get mad at every game. It's going to be bad. We know that this team is bad. I honestly think this coaching staff should be let go after today's performance. Can you let the team hire a coach who can draft the QB he can develop and fit his system? It doesn't make sense. I would. I know that this isn't a realistic expectation, but it would be nice for both parties. I would see if there's anybody who would be willing to trade for Justin Fields so he can get a second chance and this team gets some compensa- compensation for that for that draft pick that was wasted. I think that we keep hiring coaches with, that inherit a quarterback or we get we bring in a quarterback on a coach on his last legs and he gets fired. And it's just been a cycle now for a few, for the last few quarterbacks. It wasn't fair to Jay. It wasn't fair to Trubisky. It's not fair to Fields. There's just absolutely zero point to keep doing this, you know? Well, uh, and we appreciate your Thanks, call, Dan. sir. You know, it's not going to happen, folks. They Nobody right now, tonight, would probably give you a fourth-round draft pick for Justin Fields because they know there's no value there because they've seen it for 28 games that he has a big problem trying to function as a quarterback in the NFL, being able to read defenses and make decisions, and he hasn't done that. But the coaching, as you said, you know, has been just god awful. Think about this, OB. Buddy Ryan would would play a team, and he'd say, "Who's your best player? What do you want to do?" And then we try to take that away. Now you look at Kansas City today. Travis Kelsey is a special player. He's a tight end. We would. He would make sure that we were getting into over defenses and all that, and we would have to jam him every single play. And if he splits out, you walk a safety or a linebacker out, and you jam him, and you don't let him off the line of scrimmage. How many times did we see Kelsey on third down running open in the middle of the field? Nobody oh, around him. They don't, they don't even know that. Dad. I mean, it's, just, you, it's insanity. All you do is whichever side he goes, if, if, if he's at wherever he goes, which – Usually what happens with teams, wherever the tight end lines up, that's usually the strong side. And back in the day, folks, and I don't know why, I'm sure some people do it today, but we don't see that too much. You put a linebacker on, and you give him a forearm shiver or a double hand shiver, and you don't let him off the line of scrimmage. And you disrupt the timing, and you make the quarterback have to go somewhere else. Happen will be sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Before we get back to the phones, I asked you guys this in the break. About Matt Eberflus, and we, we've seen this with the last few coaching staffs as well. With the head coach with little experience, hires coordinators with little experience. It would seem to me, and again, what do I know? And a lot of that is due to the fact that we saw it right here with Lovey Smith. Yeah. He got rid of Ron Rivera because he was scared Rivera was going to be his heir, uh, heir apparent. That's and they, exactly correct, Dan. Well, and I'm you just saying. Correct. So they want to hire a bunch of you know flunkies that they think that they you know they can manipulate and somehow, some way, have a team that's that's going to function at a high level, and it just doesn't happen. Now, let me tell you something. It, look, I, I'm just you know when Buddy left, we still had the same players. We were not the same defense. It's a lot about coaching and scheme and matchups and how you you teach your players how to play the game. And it matters desperately and unfortunately we have not seen good coaching on this but on, well, we saw it with Vic Fangio. We saw that defense in night in 2019. That's that's what good defensive coaches look like. 312 981 7200. Uh, let's go out to Mike and Rockford. Mike, you're up with Happen OB. Go right ahead. Oh, boys, it's Groundhog Day. I call it the same thing every week. I don't have to tell you guys this. You know, as a Bears fan, I feel sorry for you two. I love you guys. But you're being paid to go on this radio station. you got to suffer and watch this crap every week. And, uh, you know, I can at least go do something better on my Sundays. Go work in my yard, work in my antique car, do something constructive, than, than waste my time with this. So I feel sorry for you guys. That being said, listen, guys, this is like overlapping garbage. What, what kind of a professional team or even a corporation in this country would hire 
Go back and look at they hired. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Lionel Police did not hire John Fox. John Fox was hired first. Then Lionel Police came in. Then you got Ryan Poles, who supposedly, I just found this out, I didn't notice, he did not hire Eberfuss. Eber, Eberfuss was hired two days before Poles was hired. Correct. So this just goes to show you how bass backwards this organization is, okay? And a couple other points. Ryan Poles has been terrible at the free agency signings. And we really don't know about the draft picks he's chosen because it takes a while. We won't know for two, two or three years, but I'm going to tell you guys something. They say pick the best man on the board when the guy comes. Jalen Carter fell in the lap, and you hear the stupid excuse of he doesn't fit our system, and he's got some problems in his background, personal issues. But look at the issues he had with his defensive coordinator, who who was hired, who works under Mr. Poles, whether he hired him or not. The whole thing is a bunch of garbage, guys. As they say, it's hot garbage. It's a stupid mess. And like the other caller said, guys, and I've been saying this for a long time, this organization stinks, and it's not. The Chicago Bears are never going to fix this until new ownership comes in here. We saw it with the Cubs. I believe we saw it with some other franchise in this town. But until something right, Mike, let, changes, let, 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 these, the let these guys answer the question there for you. Yeah, look. Mike, I, I, and I agree with what Mike said. You know what? The only thing that I see that I really didn't like was the professionalism of the ownership and front office of this team. What the heck's been going on with Justin Fields with his blowing his mouth off and what's been going on with Williams, our defensive coordinator. Both of them let him go on for like two weeks, if not even more. They're not explaining what's going on with Williams and nothing. Well, yeah, this, well, it's kind of quiet. Well, yeah, we're working on it. And then with Fields, it went on and on and on. You got to chop it. You got to chop the head off. You can't let this fester from day to day, from week to week. That is stupid management. That's what that is. That let it go that far and let everybody come up with every theories they want. You got to chop it off right at the head and get it done and get it over with and move on. 312-981-7200. Bob and Kerry, you are up next here with Happen OB. Go right ahead. Oh, hi, guys. Uh, love your show. Um, Thank you. I, I, I agree with you guys. You know what? Um, my opinion is this uh, Bears coaching staff uh, is really bad. And the owner and the GM have to realize that and quit being in denial and do what you have to do. Uh, I'm, I'm tired of watching the news at night, watching Eberflu say, we got to get better. Well, you know what? Does any of the reporters say, well, how are you going to get better and how are you going to win the games? So guess what? We're going to find out next week because Denver gave up 70 points, and we're going to find out how good we actually are, aren't we? Amen. We're going to find out. And by the way, for those of you uh, wondering, when was the last time the Bears won a game at home? It was last year versus Lovey Smith and the Houston Texans. That was the last time the Bears won a football game here at Soldier Field. And it's been almost there. Find out. And Denver, hey, they got, you know, uh, uh, Sean, Sean Payton is their coach, and they're 0 and 3, and you, you know, he'd like to come back home and, and give us the what for. I will right, we'll take a quick time out here. Happen OB, sponsored by your local Chevy dealer to ChevyDriveChicago.com. If you're on hold, please stay there. 312-981-7200 is our number. I think the only set that matters is the scoreboard. So, uh, you know, of course, that wasn't on our side today. So keep going, but I'm not, a, I'm not about to look at what was my completion percentage today. Like, I'm not going to do that because some games are going to be higher than normal and some games are going to be lower than you know, what I expect. So this is what it is, but I'm not going to pull up ESPN. But. Capital B is sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Justin Fields right there. 41-10 to 10 was the final as the Chiefs beat the Bears in Kansas City today. Time now for our Muller Auto Group Game Changing Moment, sponsored by the Muller family of dealerships in Hoffman Estates, Gurney, Highland Park, and Maryville. Camp, what do you think? Well, we won the toss. We deferred. Here, Mahomes, here's the ball. Well, guess what? We stopped him. It was the only time all day. We stopped three and out. We get the ball. We go empty set in the end zone, wind up punting it back. When they took the ball, they went on a 60-something yard, a play drive for a touchdown, never looked back. 
And that, that certainly did. Yep, Second that certainly position. changed the game right there. 312-981-7200. Let's get back out to the calls. A lot of fans waiting patiently to say hello to you guys. Let's go to Austin, Texas, and say hi to Robert. Robert, you're up with Hammond OB. Go ahead. Yes, good afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. Great show, as always. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have four comments on the defense and then one on the organization overall. You know, when they brought Eberflus in, he was heralded as an experienced, uh, very fine defensive coordinator, but the results over the last two years belie uh, those claims. For example, today, uh, the, heat, the defense gave up 312 yards in the first half, I observed, which is ridiculous. Two, my OB, you mentioned this, I didn't see a blitz. I didn't see the whole game today, but I didn't see one blitz run against Mahomes. They just went with, again, four-man rush and no sacks, no pressure. He had all day to throw. Against a soft zone. Robert, and no yeah. line and, tricks and, and coupled with My third blitzers. comment is that it seems like the, the middle of the field, the mid-zone, is open all day today. Those guys weren't, and I don't understand that. I understand a cover two defense. You have two safeties back to prevent the big play. But does that mean you, you're you so conservative, you're so worried about giving up the bomb that you leave the whole middle of the field open? Maybe someone can explain that defensive coverage to me. And the fourth comp was on defense, that uh, third touchdown by Kansas City, they ran that little pick play where they brought the receiver from who was wide out, brought him inside, pick brisker, and and the guy, you know, who Brister was supposed to cover, he couldn't get to him because he was picked and got an easy touchdown. It was like taking candy from a baby. Yeah, that was McKinnon. Have, you know, I've seen Andy Reid run that pick play for years and years and years. Why wouldn't the defensive coordinator uh, observe that also and prepare his defense for that play in that situation? And then my, my last comment is on the Bears' overall organization, since George McCaskey took over in 2011, they are 82 and 115, 416 winning percentage. They have made two playoff appearances and zero playoff victories in that span. My suggestion: McCaskey fire his latest general manager and head coach and start over, and that he resign as well because his board isn't going to fire him because. Uh, the board is comprised of all his relatives. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, well, this said McKeskey that you're talking about it, George, he basically has stepped back and they hired a president, Kevin Warren. This happened back in the spring. Essentially, that I think Warren's big, big project is to get a stadium built. But, you know, if it was me, I'd be worrying about building a team first. But... That's just me. But the other part about that, uh, some, you had a lot of good points, but the soft zone that Eberflus has, yes, they were, it was like a it's sky, us. a sky, uh, a, 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 a two deep zone, and the linebackers were not getting any depth. I don't know why. You know, there was, hey, Kansas City does a lot of really good stuff with play action, and everybody's worried about Mahomes, you know, getting out of the pocket. And, and anyway, like you said, that middle of the field was open all day. But as far as McKinnon scoring on that little pick play down at the goal line, they, they'll they run that three, four, five times a game on short yardage or goal line. Anybody that does not look at that and say we have to be ready for this and play in and out with the corner, they're they're nuts. But unfortunately, we 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 make mistake after mistake after mistake, and that was a mistake of a game plan not being prepared. All right, we're going to get to a quick break here in just a second. We've got about a minute or so here for Don out at Crystal Lake. Don, you're on with Hampton OB. Come Go on, right man. ahead. Hey, guys, they have a nice show here, but, uh, you know, I go back to 86 when the Bears agenda, instead of hiring or putting a contract together for Wilbur Marshall, we're worried about getting rid of the Chicago Honey Bears. I call it the McCaskey Schmutz, and it's not going to improve until they sell the team. I hear all your callers talking about this, just about every every phone call. You know, Lovey Smith got lucky. He had a great defense. He had Urlacher Briggs, Peanut Tillman. They also had that Slowly Hall of Famer, Devin Hester, that gave you the ball practically at the 40, 45 yard line every down. And you and I could have been quarterback Rex Grossman 
in the Super Bowl. I don't know, guys. I think we've been in this trance for a long, long time. What do you think? Thanks, Don. Appreciate it. Well, I, uh, you're exactly correct. There's no question about it. And I, I'll tell you, when you go to the Honey Bears, that was a Virginia McCaskey move. Yep. That's exactly what it was, Don. Virginia McCaskey, gone. Well, Mike McCaskey was the president at the time. At in the you know, after the Super Bowl, and he asserted himself in a lot of different ways. One being, well, he wasn't going to to pay exorbitant numbers for players. And Wilbur, that's why you know he was you know taken by the, the Redskins. Otis Wilson hurt his knee; they didn't want to resign him. He wound up having to go and play for the Raiders. And you look around; I mean, Dent had to fight for every you know nickel he was ever uh, paid. It was just that was Mike McKeskey's mentality. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Hot route, hot route. Who brought it today? Looking at which bear played tough, played hard. In the middle, knocked around and intercepted. Quindell Johnson, the rookie from. Memphis has his first NFL pick. Courtesy of Fox Sports. We brought it today, sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, the car to bring through it all. Quindell Johnson with his first career interception, hopefully one of one of the few guys that was ready to play today was Jalen Johnson. He made two, two really good tackles in the first series, and then when they scored, he pulled a hamstring, and so we had to bring in uh, Mr. Jones. Hamilton will be sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. 41-10, to 10, the final if you're just joining us. Uh, the Chiefs over the Bears, who have now lost 10, uh, 13 straight games dating back to last year. October 24th of 2022, on a misty Monday night in New England, was the last time that this team won a football game. Let's go back out to the phone lines, and we'll welcome in uh, Dan from Mount Prospect. You're up here with Hamilton OB. Go ahead, Dan. Yes, is this me, Dan? I'm Dan That's Alberti. You? Okay, Dan, go ahead. Okay, who I'm doing with over? Dan Hampton? Yes, Go sir. It. Come on. You're talking to both. What you both got? Of you. Both of you. Okay. Here's my here's my solution. You gotta go back a few years, pick the right agency to find another Jim Finks. Owned by the Hunt, Hunt brothers, for crying out loud in, in Kansas City, what they did for Kansas City, it's marvelous. We need somebody like that in Chicago. Yeah. You know, and, and again, the right guy to do it. He can remember they were they were they were, uh, you know, they were, his, they were your bosses. Uh, yeah. they, the first thing Jim Finks did was hire Hampton and Obradovich, and from that on, the Bears started getting successful. <laughs> Dan, well, the, thanks the, for the call. We appreciate it. The very first thing Jim Finks did was draft Walter Payton, and then he started adding other guys. So, yeah, uh, hey. A smart general manager that hits on your first round picks is the easiest c- criteria to success. Back out to the phone lines. Ron in Wilmington. Ron, you're up with Hampton B. Go ahead. Hey, gentlemen. First of all, I just want to say it's an honor to uh, share the phone lines with both you guys. And uh, I, I don't mean to piggyback on a guy you had called a couple of minutes ago named Robert, but he was talking about uh, Brisker getting uh, blocked on a uh, pick play or something like that. But, w- but what, what I'm really concerned about is how in the world doesn't he realize that that play is happening to him through film study, scout team work, live action in practice, that he's not jumping that route and causing a penalty to be called against the offensive player. Why? I mean, this happens over and, and over, over and over. Ronnie, that is us. Ronnie. That is a brilliant point. And and again, the only answer is he isn't prepared for it. He didn't see it enough. He did not do his due diligence as as, as a player. He didn't did not have coaches that prepared him and the defense for that play. You know, think back about six, seven years ago, Seattle and uh, New England, they they tried some kind of like a little pick play on the goal line, and that cornerback, I can't remember his name, but he was so prepared, he jumped the route and intercepted it at the one-yard line. And that's part of the you know legend of Bill Belichick. He would prepare his team for all those schematical decisions that they're going to be, you know, faced in a game. And yet, time and time and time again, 
we are caught flat-footed and unprepared. Ron, let me let us go back here. When we went when they, after the draft, okay, and this is Eberflus' second year coming in coming into this his second year. All right. Now they when training camp opened, they had their other pre, you know where you have the they come in for two, three days. There was a couple of times they the had OTAs. That. Yeah. yeah, right. Exactly, Danny. And I'll tell you what. They came into training camp. And here's what they did, Ronnie. Nothing. I'm telling you they did nothing. They, and you say, well, how could they do nothing? They walked through. They ran through. And, and, and whatever they were trying to do, there was no pressure. There was no guys going full speed. There was, no, there was nothing. Then we get into the exhibition season. Now, why in God's green earth do you try? You get down to fifty-three players, the people that are going to be playing the seventeen-game schedule. Why weren't you playing those people at least a quarter, a quarter and a half, or the the, the entire first half? You played basically none of these guys. For the three games. And why do you play the three exhibition games? You play them to get ready for the season. You practice going full speed with your number one guys. At least get them in for a half. And they did nothing. And we started out, and this is the third game, and offensively and defensively, what did we do? Nothing. That's exactly what we've done. And that's what we practice in training camp and during the exhibition season. We practice not doing a damn thing. And I don't think I know what I'm talking about. You know, essentially it's like a glorified uh, gym class. And as far as the exhibition game... Six, yeah, they didn't do anything. They did nothing. But 16... They hit behind, oh, injuries. 16 of the 22 starters played less than 10 plays in the preseason. You deserve to get beat if you do that. And you know the... Uh, That's where it started again, folks. Yeah. Now, let me just one more time on that. If you're wondering, well, how can you know already well the first game, well the second, now what happened there with the third game? It was in training camp, and it was in the exhibition season, okay? And it falls right on Eber Flus's head. He's the head coach at that time. He's the guy making the decisions. What time we do this? Offensively, we do that. Defensively, we do this. They didn't do a damn thing. And guess what's happening? Guess what's happening? We're falling apart all four quarters of the first three games. Why? Because we didn't do a damn thing in training camp and in the exhibition season. But they had a good week of practice leading up to this game, according to Matt Eberflus and according to him every week. The blah, time blah, to do blah. that was yeah. back then. Oh, I know. I get it. And, and he, that was the time in training camp and an exhibition season. So you're ready when the first damn game is played. All right, we have to take a quick time out here. We'll come back for more of your phone calls. We're out of here at 830, so we'll get to as many of you as we can. If you're on hold, please stay there. 312-981-7200. Hold on, folks. 7200. Happen will be sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Um, all we need is one to get this thing going. I don't know if I told you that right, but the Lions started 1-6 last year, and they almost made the playoffs. So uh, just keep that faith. Keep going. It's in the big picture. It's the third game of the season. You know, we got 14 left at least. So just keep going. Keep working. That's it. Quarterback Justin Fields. Happen will be sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Bears lose 41-10. to And it is now time for the Curveball Bonehead Play of the Game, sponsored by Curveball, the original barbecue whiskey. Join the Bonehead Nation today at CurveballWhiskey.com. Gentlemen, uh, how about a bonehead play today? Well, i got to tell you what. You, you, this is probably the biggest bonehead play so far of the year. Okay? We're down... 41 to nothing. <laughs> 41 to nothing. The game is, is, is dwindling away from us. 41 to nothing. And what does Zebra Flutes do? It's fourth down and on we're the on the three. 21 yard line. He goes for a field goal. Wouldn't even set, wouldn't even try to flood the end zone and score a touchdown. You talk about a bonehead play, and by the way, that's when I need a shot of that whiskey. <laughs> that right then and there, I couldn't believe. How dare you you kick a field goal, you lose it 41 to nothing? That falls under the word moron. What are you thinking about? 
Mine is down at the goal. And the whiskey was good, by the way. Yes, uh, down at the goal line. Kansas City, I think it was on the four or five yard line, and Travis Kelsey uh, kind of splits out about three yards off the offensive tackle. Nobody within five yards of him. Nobody jamming him. He runs to the back of the end zone, turns around, and catches a touchdown. How stupid do you have to be? That is a bonehead play. Indeed. Indeed it was. There were a lot of bonehead plays today, but those were two good ones. Those are definitely two good ones. I like mine a little better than yours, Dan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you... Yeah, they were on the three-yard line. You're getting slapped around like a bad little puppy dog almost the whole game, and you got... My God, what? You're 41 to nothing, and you kick a field goal so you just could take that zero off? That is called gutless football, folks, in my book. All right, 312-981-7200, the number. Let's go out to Joe in Crown Point. You're up with Happen OB. Go ahead, Joe. Hello, gentlemen. I'm a big fan. I listen to you guys every week. Thank you. I think there's a silver a silver lining in all this. If you, you could probably get the number one pick next year, and you could get Caleb from USC. Would you draft him? And if you keep losing every game, you'll have a perfect season. And only the Dolphins have done that, so you would be in, in a reverse. Good crowd. <laughs> That's not good you perfection, <laughs> Joe. In Joe, reverse. just let me get on my Dan. You take it. Just let me give you a quick answer. We'll screw it up. Uh, you won't even get a perfect season. And and I used to go out with a few of the honey bears back in the day. All right, before, before they were uh, terminated. So you got some age on you. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, again. You know, whoever drafts that kid, in my mind, it's going to be, he may not be Mahomes, but he's the closest thing I've seen to him in, in the last six years. And if the draft were tonight, the Bears would have number one and number four, that courtesy of uh, the Carolina Panthers. So that's well, just, Dan, if yeah. what you said is correct, we won't draft them. Okay. Robert in Glenview. Robert in Glenview, you're up here with Hampton OB. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Great to talk to you again. Um, yeah, just a minor point. The first thing Mike McCaskey did was he fired the Honey Bears, and then he fired Jim Fink so he could run the team. But my question is about the new stadium coming forward. I mean, everyone knows that they purchased that land in Arlington Heights, the racetrack, and they did it without any contingencies in place, which you would never do on a real estate transaction. But anyway, they're moving full steam ahead on, on the um, state of Arlington Heights, but all of a sudden... They stopped and they start looking at Chicago sites. And, you know, I know about the deal that Hallis made when they first incorporated the two leagues together. There would only be one team in Chicago. But I wonder if the NFL called them and said, hey, if you guys move to Arlington Heights, we're going to bring another franchise into Chicago. So do you think that could be possible? No, I don't right, think Robert, so. Thanks, man. I don't think so. And I don't think the league's going to expand anytime soon. But here's the deal. the For whatever reason, they bought that 200 acres out at Arlington Heights. And, again, I it breaks my heart to think that they would not play at Soldier Field. Because, you know, I played my whole career there, uh, 50 years you know, a lot of good times and a lot of bad ones. But all that being said, they're dumb blanks if they don't own their own stadium. In my world, I think they'd have to, you know, somehow, some way, you'd try to get a lend lease and buy Soldier Field. I know it sounds crazy, but, you know, it, 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 stranger things have happened in this city. So I remember one night uh, a bunch of tracos went out there and destroyed an airport about. 300 yards from where the stadium sits. So crazy things happen here in this city. 312-981-7200. Let's go to uh, Bill and Joliet. You're on with Happen OB. Bill, go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys, for taking my call. Um, so, yeah, I agree with so many sentiments tonight with everybody, all the callers and you guys, and, and I'm already looking forward to next week, and I, I got a bad feeling because, let's put it this way, the Broncos are 0-3, the Bears are 0-3. But now the Broncos have something to play for. They were humiliated today. Put up, they had 70 points put up against them. But still, I don't know if you guys saw the stats. I was looking them up. Russell Wilson threw for 300 yards today. He did. Against that top-tier defense. What do you think he's going to do to the Bears? They have something to play for now. They were humiliated. They're going to come to Soldier Field, and they're going to kill us. And we're going to be 0-4. 
Well, let's hope that does not happen, but you're exactly right. Any team in any day, any time is capable, but this team is playing so poorly right now, so bad fundamentally that – uh, you know that I. Do you know those guys in Vegas making Denver a two and a half point favorite? They don't. They don't miss many meals. They're pretty smart. Well, I want to tell you what the one change that they better make defensively, and and I'm talking Jack Sanborn, Are you, our middle linebacker last year. Kid came out of nowhere. I think he's from run, one of the western or northern suburbs. Yep. Uh, Arlington okay. Heights area. Yeah, something like that. And I'm going to tell you what. This kid, folks, is a player. This kid is a player. He gives you, I'm telling you, you can just see it, just bleeding from him. He gives 110% on every play, and I'm going to tell you what. The other two linebackers, Edwards and Edmonds, I'm going to tell you, Edmonds, the middle linebacker, instead of sitting Sanborn down after first down, you sit Edmonds down. What is he, Dan? Forty million, fifty million? They got him. They get almost uh, like seventeen, eighteen million a year. Seventeen or eighteen million. They brought him in there, and you know what he's done? Nothing, nothing. Jack Sandborn is in there. When he's in there, even for a play, he does something. That's the guy that should be in there. He should be the captain of the defensive team. He should be calling the defensive signals. That's what should happen. You want to make some changes? Offensively and defensively, going into the fourth game, make that change. Get a kid in there that gives his 110% and can play the damn position and loves the game. Make the change. All right, gentlemen, we're rapidly running out of time here. And, uh, can we get the last call real quick? Let's get it. I think Sammy's on the line with them right now, so we may not have okay. a chance to get there. So uh, we appreciate everybody Call calling. Week, yep. 312 981 7200 was our number here, and we'll uh, be back on with you 11 a.m. coming up on Sunday, Bears and the Broncos. And then we'll be back with you on our post game show after baseball that evening. So uh, uh, stick with us, and uh, hopefully. One of these times we're going to be talking about a Bears victory here, and uh, hopefully it's uh, it's Sunday against the Denver Broncos. If you look down the road, next week has got to be it. It's you, that X marks the spot. Got to find a way to beat the Broncos, gentlemen. Thanks so much. Have a safe trip home. We'll see you back here on Sunday for uh, Hampton OB the pregame show at eleven o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Here uh, that will be next week, of course, as the Bears take on the Broncos. Unfortunately, Thank you, the, folks, the Bears lose to the Chiefs tonight. 41-10, to 10. it's now 13 straight losses dating back to last year. They've given up 25 or more points in each of those games as they continue their NFL record. Happen OB, sponsored by your local Chevy dealers at Chevy Drive Chicago. He's very mad right now, and um, I just hope they, they do something better. And I love the show, I just want to keep it short, and uh, you guys are doing a great show. Call well, Chicago Bears. Thanks, Tiffany. You know, well, you, Tiffany, did, you know, thank you for thank calling. You. Appreciate it. Hey, OB, you knew the old man a lot better than I. I bet he's spinning in the grave. Oh, boy. The, I'll tell you. Let, let me tell you something. That, that man did not mince words. Okay? He did not mince words. He didn't. He's basically a guy that started this league and kept this league going. This goes back, folks, decades and decades ago when the league was in trouble and George Hallis gave several of the team's monies to keep going, to keep their team alive. And I would say one was like the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Packers, etc. Because he had a vision of what this was. And it wasn't the Myra family in New York. It was George Hallis of Bohemian descent right here in Chicago. He made the National Football League. And you talk about spinning in his grave. I'll tell you what, Danny. He... If, if he was alive today and he saw this and he heard these 